In this video, I will show you how to implement user registration, authentication, and role-based authorization using ASP.NET Core MVC, Identity, and SQL Server. So let's create a new project. Let's select C Sharp and Web. And then let's select ASP.NET Core Web application with MVC. Then next. Let's provide the project name, then next. Then let's select the version of the .NET framework. I will use .NET 7, then create. Now let's create a new database. So we can click on Server Explorer. And let's create a new connection. So the server is available on my computer. So here we can write dot, which means localhost. And let's create a new database and you can call it DB9, for example. Also, we need to set Trust Server Certificate to true. So let's click on Advanced. Then here we have Trust Server Certificate. So let's select True. Then OK. Then OK. So this database does not exist and I want to create it. So let's click on Yes. Now we have this new connection. And for the moment, we don't have any table. So we need the connection string, so we can make a right click, then properties, then let's copy the connection string. And let's save it into our application. So let's go to appsettings.json and let's create a new section. Let's call it connection strings. Then let's create a connection string. We can call it a default connection, for example. And let's paste the connection string. Let's save the file. Now we need to install some packages. So we can make a right click on this application. Then manage NuGet packages. Let's click on browse. And the first package that we need is SQL Server. So here we can type EF SQL Server. Let's select this package. And because I am using .NET 7, I will choose version 7 of this package. Then install. Then we need to install another package, which is called Entity Framework Tools. So here we can type EF Tools. Let's select this package. Let's select the version. Then install. Then we need Identity. So here we can type Identity Entity Framework. Let's select this package. Let's select the version. Then install. So now we installed all the required packages. So we can close this window. Now let's create the application DB context class that allows us to connect to the database using Entity Framework. It is a service, so let's create a new folder. And let's call it services. Then let's create a new class. And let's call it application DB context. So this class extends the identity DB context class of identity framework. So here we can add colon, then identity DB context. Let's add the required package. Then let's create the constructor. So we can use this button. Then generate constructor application DB context that requires a parameter called options. Now let's add this class to the service container and let's configure it to use SQL Server and to use the connection string that we have in appsettings.json. So let's go to program.cs and let's add it to the service container. So just here, we can call builder.services.addbcontext. Then we need to provide the type of the DB context class, which is application DB context. Let's provide this function with an array function. So it requires a parameter, we can call it options. Then let's read the connection string from appsettings.json. Then let's configure this application DB context to connect to SQL Server. So here we can call options. 
dot use SQL server. Let's save all the files and let's create a migration file that allows us to create identity tables. So in application DB context, we are using identity DB context that allows us to create identity tables. So we can click on package manager console and here we can call add migration. And we can create a migration called first migration. Now we have this new migration file that allows us to create identity tables. So to create the database tables, we have to call update database. So here we have this error, the connection string property has not been initialized. So let's go to program.cs and we need to provide the use SQL server method with this connection string. Let's save the file. And let's execute update database again. Now the tables have been created successfully. So let's refresh the connection. And here we have identity tables. Now let's scaffold identity pages. So we can make a right click on this application, then add, then new scaffolded item. Let's select identity, then identity, then add. So all of these files will be added to the application, but only the files that we will select can be modified. In our case, we will create user accounts with different roles, so we only need to modify the register page. So let's select this page, then let's select the application DB context class. We don't have a user class, so let's click on add. Now identity pages are added successfully. And they are available in the areas folder. And here we have the register page. Also under views, we have the shared folder that contains the layout file. And also we have a new file called login partial. So in this file, we have this UL element. So if the user is authenticated, we will display these two items. But if the user is not authenticated, then we will display these two items, the register item and the login item. Now let's add this UL element to the layout file. So let's go to the layout file, which is available under shared. And here we have the nav bar that contains this UL element. So just after this UL element, we will display the new UL element that is available in login parse. So just here, let's add partial and let's provide the name of the file, which is underscore login partial. Now let's go to program.cs. So in this file, we can see that we have this new statement, add default identity that allows us to add identity services to the service container. And here we can see that we have this configuration. So we can change required confirmed account to false. Let's format this a little bit. So because identity uses razor pages, we need to configure the application to use razor pages. So just here, we need to call builder.services.addRazorPages. And here we have to call app.mapRazorPages. Let's run the application. Now let's click on a register. And this is the register form. Let's click on login. And this is the login form. So for the moment, we did not create roles. This means that when we register a new user, the user will not have any role. So now we need to create roles.